What up, y'all? It's one Mr. Downtown Ray Mel, and you're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Monday, March 9th, 2020, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash Entertainment Report with Ray Mello, that's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O, on Twitter at The Enter Report, or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio, just Go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainer Report, and it'll take you to the page. I hope everyone had a fantastic weekend. The 45th annual AFI Life Achievement Award Gala Tribute in celebration of Julie Andrews in Los Angeles was postponed Saturday as a precaution in the wake of the con- coronavirus outbreak. The schedule is scheduled for April 25th, but will now take place in early summer. The specific date of the tribute and its air date on TNT will be announced soon, the American Film Institute says. AFI CEO and President Bob Gazelle said in a statement Saturday, AFI's decision to postpone the event is simply in response to the rapidly evolving nature of current events and our promise to ensure the well-being of the artists and audience that gather each year to celebrate America's art form. Pregnant singer-songwriter Sierra also canceled her plans to perform at the grand opening for the new Fort Hood USO in Texas on March 19th, the Hollywood Reporter says. She said in a statement Saturday, with the continued spread of the coronavirus through the U.S., as a pregnant woman, my doctors have advised me to limit travel and large group gatherings. I'm disappointed I won't be able to return this month to the place where I was born, Fort Hood, Texas, and put the amazing show we had planned. I urge everyone to be diligent in taking steps to stay healthy and safe. The event is expected to be rescheduled for later this year. The Yukon government in Canada announced Saturday that it's canceling the 2020 Arctic Winter Games, a sporting competition that attracts 2,000 athletes from around the world. This year's event was scheduled from March 15th to March 21st. One Direction alum, Louis Tomlinson, canceled his concert next week in Milan, Italy. He tweeted Thursday, I was really excited to bring the Walls tour to Italy, but the health and safety of my fans is more important than anything else. Mariah Carey said she is postponing her Tuesday show in Hawaii until the end of the year. She posted on Tuesday, Aloha Hawaii. I'm so, so sad to have announced that I'm postponing my show to November. I was excited to come back to Hawaii on my anniversary month, but evolving international travel restrictions force us to consider everyone's safety and well-being. Just said, with that said, I'm super excited to be coming to Honolulu in November and perform my special All I Want This Christmas Is You and Hits and Extravaganza for the first time in Hawaii. I can't wait to see you. Stay safe. On Friday, organiza- organizers canceled the South by Southwest Film, Music, and Tech Festival in Austin, Texas. The fest was to take place March 13th to the 22nd. Earlier this week, companies such as Warner Media, Netflix, Apple, Twitter, and Facebook began pulling out of the festival out of concerns for the, for the coronavirus. Austin Mayor Steve Adler announced on Friday he ordered the cancellation. The XSW confirmed the cancellation in a statement on Twitter. They wrote, the show must go on in its our DNA, and this is the first time in 34 years that the March event will not take place. As recently as Wednesday, Austin Public Health stated that there is no evidence that closing XSXW and any other gatherings will make the community safer. However, the situation evolved rapidly, and we honor and respect the city's Austin's decision. Organizers at the Ultra Music Festival announced on Friday that the city postponed the Miami Festival, which was to take place March 20th to the 26th. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says the virus has sickened 164 people and killed 11 in the United States as of 4 p.m. Thursday. John Hopkins, basing its numbers on the latest state and local health departments, reported 256 ill and 14 deaths as of 12.30 p.m. on Friday. John Hopkins says there has been five confirmed cases in Texas near San Antonio and Houston. Senator Elizabeth Warren, who dropped out of the presidential race on Thursday, appeared on this weekend's edition of Saturday Night Live, popping up in a parody of the Fox News late-night program, The Ingram Angle. Warren thanked her supporters, family, and friends for their kind words in the days since she suspended her campaign. Asked by Ingram portrayer Kate McKinnon, who is she going to endorse going forward? Senator Bernie Sanders or former President uh, Joe Biden? 
Warren joked, maybe I'll just pull a New York Times and endorse them both. She also said she had no regrets about how she ran her campaign. Warren said, we built a wide coalition of teachers, preschool teachers, middle school teachers, and teachers' pet. And not only did I not accept money from billionaires, I got to give one a swirly on live TV. But now I've got a little time to do a little self-care, hanging out with my dog Bailey, prank calling big banks, drag racing Subarus, and avoiding Twitter. The sketch also featured in, uh, Ingram talking to Fox staffer Chris Matthews, played by Daryl Hammond, who recently left MSNBC, and Fox News talk show host Judge Janine Pirro, played by Cicely Strong, who assured viewers not to worry about the coronavirus. At the end of the cold opening, McKinnon appeared with Warren, dressed as the Massachusetts senator. Actor and filmmaker John Krasinski is to guest host the March 20th edition of Saturday Night Live. Singer and songwriter Dua Lipa will provide the musical entertainment for the evening. Lipa tweeted, can't wait. Krasinski, who is known for his roles in The Office, and Jack Ryan will soon be seen in A Quiet Place 2, which he also directed. Luke Evans and Josh Gad have signed on to reprise their Beauty and the Beast roles of Gaston and Lafoe in a prequel series for Disney+. Plus. The Hollywood Reporter said the eight-episode musical event will be an origin story for the characters the actors played in the 2017 live-action blockbuster. Deadline said the project was written by Gad and Once Upon a Time creators um, Eddie Kittis and Adam Hortzwitz. Composer Alan Macon, who created the music for Beauty and the Beast, as well as the 1991 uh, anime and movie musical on which it was based is in talks to return for the limited series. Kittis and Horowitz are no strangers to the Beauty and the Beast universe. The fair, the fairy tale was woven into Once Upon a Time with Robert Carlyle's Rumpelstiltskin playing the Beast and Emile de Raven as Belle. RuPaul announced on Twitter Friday that Netflix has canceled its hit series uh, Edge and the Queen after one season. RuPaul said, alongside a promotional image from the series, End of the Road for AJ and the Queen at Netflix has decided not to extend our road trip across America. Thank you for all the love and support. We're so very proud of the work. AJ and the Queen stars RuPaul as the drag queen Ruby Red, who travels from club to club across the U.S., along with an 11-year-old orphan, AJ, played by Izzy Gasparitz. RuPaul created the series with Sex and the City writer and producer Michael Patrick King. The 10-episode first season premiered in January. Michael Leon Woolley, Josh Segarra, Tia Carrera, and Katarina Tannenbaum also starred. Hatchet Book Group announced it has canceled the planned publication of Oscar-winning filmmaker Woody Allen's memoir, A Propos for Nothing. Uh, the publishing company said in a statement Friday, Hatchet Book Group has decided that it will not publish Woody Allen's memoirs, A Propos of Nothing, originally scheduled for sale in April 2020, and return all rights to the author. A decision to cancel Mr. Allen's book was a difficult one. At HBG, we take our relationships with authors very seriously and do not cancel books lightly. Over the past few days, H HBG leadership and has extensive conversations with our staff and others. After listening, we came to the conclusion that moving forward with the publication will not be feasible for HBG. People.com said the company made the decision after uh, 75 staffers walked out to protest the publication of Allen's book. Earlier in the week, Allen's estranged son, Pulitzer Prize winning journalist and hashtag MeToo advocate, Ronan Farrell, cut his ties with Hatchet, which had also published his book, Catch and Kill. Ronan Farrell for, has for years publicly supported his sister, Dylan Farrell, who said Allen sexually abused her as a child. Allen has denied any wrongdoing and has not been convicted of any crimes. The Farrells expressed on social media their gratitude to those who objected to the publication. Farrell tweeted, I'm grateful to all of the Hatchet employees and authors who spoke up and to the company for listening. Baharo novelist Stephen Kick said in his own Twitter post that he is not sure that was the right move. King tweeted, the Hatchet decision to drop Woody Allen's book makes me very uneasy. It's not him. I don't give a damn about Mr. Allen. It's who gets muzzled next that worries me. He wrote, if you think he's a pedophile, don't buy the book. Don't go to his movies. Don't go in, uh, to him play to listen to him to play jazz at the Carlisle. Vote with your wallet by withholding it. In America, that's how we do it. Ken concluded, let me add that it was a shitty tone deaf of Hatchet to want to publish Woody Allen's book after publishing Ronan Farrow's. The Illinois Supreme Court has rejected actor Justice Smollett's request to dismiss a case in which he accused 
of falsely reporting that he was a victim of a racist and homophobic attack near his Chicago home. The court on Friday also refused to remove a special prosecutor who filed the charges. Smollett, his 37, pleaded not guilty last month to a six-count grand jury indictment in the case. After entering the not guilty pleas, uh, Judge James Lynn set bond at $20,000 and released the Empire actor on his own recognizance, ordering him to return to court in, on March 18th. So while he was black and openly gay, was indicted in February by a special grand jury that accused him of filing false police reports in connection with the January 2019 incident in which he said he was attacked by two white men who looped a, no, a, a, a noose around his neck and poured bleach on him after taunting him with racial and homophobic remarks. In a case of divided nation along lines of race and sexual orientation, police ultimately said the incident was a hoax and that Smollett staged the assault to bolster his career and charged him with 16 counts of disorderly conduct. Those charges were dropped a month later in a controversial move by Cook County's state attorney, Kim Fox. A Chicago job subsequently accepted a petition to reopen the case and appointed former U.S. attorney Dan Webb to lead a new inquiry. Following a six-month investigation, Webb announced new charges. Smollett has maintained his innocence and said police have overlooked witnesses who corroborated his story. BTS's Map of the Soul 7 is the number one album in the United States this week. Coming in number two on the Billboard 200 chart dated Saturday is Young Boy Never Broke Again's Still Flexing, Still Stepping, followed by Ozzy Osbourne's Ordinary Man number three, Justin Bieber's Changes number four, and Roddy Rich's Please Excuse Me for Being Antisocial number five. Right at the top tier are Billy with the Hoodies Artist 2.0 and number six, Post Balloon's Hollywood's Bleeding at number seven, The Late Pop Smoke. Meet the Woo, Volume 2 and Number 8, Trippy Red's A Love Letter to You 4 and Number 9, and Billy Idish's When We All Fall Asleep, Where Do We Go at Number 10. The Anime Adventure Onward is the number one movie in North America, earning $40 million in receipts this week in box office. Mojo.com announced Sunday. Coming in number two with $15.2 million is The Invisible Man, followed by The Way Back at number three with $8.5 million, Side the Hedgehog at number four with $8 million, and The Call of the Wild at number five with $7 million. Right up the top tier are Emma at number six with $5 million, Bad Boys for Life at number seven with $3.1 million, Birds of Prey at number eight with $2.2 million, and Practical Jokers the Movie at number nine with $1.85 million, and My Hero Academia. Heroes Rising at number 10 with $1.5 million. And that was your entertainer report for Monday, March 9th, 2020. I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back tomorrow to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Facebook.com slash The Entertainment Report with Ray Mello. That's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O. On Twitter at The Enter Report or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of the Entertainer Report anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainer Report, and it'll take you to the page. Good night, and God bless you all.